and welcome to a brand new episode of The Partial Historians. We're actually up to episode 80. <gasps> oh, what oh a my thrill. lord. <laughs> I am one of your hosts, Dr. Greenfield, and sitting beside me, looking fabulous. Ah, for the Fabians, I like mm. it. Yep. Is a curly haired Dr. Radness. <laughs> I like the curls. Ah, uh, yeah, it's summer. Yeah, <laughs> well, I do it. Here. <laughs> it is here, listeners. <laughs> Plus 40 degrees that summer. <laughs> That's the Southern Hemisphere. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so we are mm. deep in the narrative of the history of Rome from mm. the founding of the city. And when we last left you, it was the end of the year 479-ish. So you say, but yeah. try and prove it. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to. I'm just not going to try and prove it. We're in the 470s. We're in the 470s. <laughs> that is a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> we're in a whole new decade. Yeah, we kind of uh, we kind of figured out, because uh, uh, we were hitting an anniversary, uh, we were looking at our stats, we realised that we're probably going to be nearly 50 by the time we get into the, ne- <laughs> into the next century. <laughs> oh, we'll be, Ooh. well, that puts us at like, you but know, hey, in our 70s by the time I we get to see them. Exactly, I see that as good news. It means there's just so much room coming your way. <laughs> <laughs> so much, it never ends. Yeah. Amazing. Okay, so the Fabians. Oh yeah, they've just built a fort, self-funded. Yep, they're a family. They've got all their family, they've got all their friends, they've got all their clients, as in people who kind of owe them one. <laughs> Or one, two, oh, them one. They've packed up. They've gone to the frontier. All these F words. <laughs> Where they're going to fight. Ha. If need be. Yes. The ferocious. <laughs> People of A. Uh, classic. Fiona. Out. <laughs> nice. Finito. That's right. Nice. So they've built a sort of a garrison fortress thing yep. on the river Crimera, yes. which is the tributary that flows past the city of Ve mm-hmm. and joins up with the Tiber, which then obviously flows past Rome. Yes. Hello. Yeah. Um, and they're doing some defensive stuff and it's allowing them to do incursions from the fortress. Yes. Yes. And we talked we talked last episode a little bit about um, how this was so unusual because not only is the Roman state uh, entertained and put into action this idea of having a private sorry sorry a standing army, it is also essentially a private army because the Fabians are footing the bill and reaping the rewards. If you mm. want to know more about this? Please see previous episodes. <laughs> <laughs> Mercenaries, you say? Yeah, right. me. I know. Warlords, you say? Gangs, you say? Games oh, of thieves. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's where we're up to, pretty much. Yeah. Mm. So, what does Dionysius have to say about this uh, this excursion? Does it begin well? Oh yeah, it seems mm. to be going quite well. Yeah. Um, to start off with, we do hear we're now in four seventy eight. Yes. BCE. Okay. So we've got some new consuls. Ooh, yes. And. No surprise, given that the Fabii have all moved north. There's no Fabians. <laughs> their domination of the consulship has now at an end. Just a necessary <laughs> step. <laughs> so we have a couple of new consuls. Mm. Uh, Lucius Aemilius Mamercus. Yes, who we have met before. Mm. Yes, A consul. familiar face. Yeah, consul of 484. Consul of 484 previously mm. served a consulship with Kaizu Fabius. Oh, yeah. Kaizu Fabius, yeah. Mm. So that probably has... Uh, I'm going to say it's probably not a coincidence. That might have some implications. That someone who's previously been consul with a member of the Fabian clan is now consul. Carrying the torch! <laughs> That's right. Keep going. <laughs> and we also have Gaius Servilius. Yeah. Um, and they're the only names that he's given in Dionysius of Halicarnassus. But if we can sell Broughton. But if we can sell Broughton. Yeah. And uh, apparently if you consult the Fasti mm. Capitolini. <laughs> um, he has a couple of other names as well. Um, Structus. Structus? Ahala. Ahala. Such a weird name. So sounds very un Roman. It really does. I don't I know where I don't know what to do with that name. Neither do I. I mean it sounds like I don't even know, like not Germanic, but I think I, I think when I say it all together it reminds me of like Valhalla or something. It's like Serbia, Structus, Ahala. <laughs> In any case, this guy's new to the consulship. He is, yeah. <laughs> Surprise! Yeah, and again, I said again, I think the name Says it all. He's new. He's new on so the So new. Yeah. Sounds very different. Is he yeah. Nordic? Maybe. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. Really <laughs> yeah. not sure. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, so we've got a newbie and an old guy. 
Oh yeah. Mm-mm. It's the odd couple. <laughs> it's happening. <laughs> okay, so what is happening in your world in 478, Dr. G? Things start off on a pretty bad bat. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Rome uh, becomes informed that they're dealing with some negative uh, relationships on just about every side. Oh, okay. So like what you talked about last time, how the Sabines aren't happy, the Acrii aren't happy, the Volsci aren't happy. Yeah. And of course they... That's pretty much given. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Romans learn that the Volscians and the Aquians have entered into an agreement <gasps> to send out their armies. Sneaky bastards. Yeah. <laughs> an agreement. So, guys, the Volsci are sort of southeast, the Aquii are sort of northeast, and they've agreed now, apparently, according to the rumors, to send out their armies into Roman and Allied territory at the same time. I really thought that these days were over. You know, I thought we were going to be able to put them behind us. Nope. Apparently not. Sorry. Faceless foes. <laughs> Even worse, word has come uh, that all of Tyrrhenia, so all of the Etruscans, and the Romans aren't really sure how many of those they really are. Sure, yeah. Um, have become hostile towards Rome. Goodness mm. me, I wonder why. I was going to say, <laughs> I feel like that's probably been the case for a while. Maybe they're only just noticing for the first time. <laughs> yes, but apparently all of these other ones are going to join up and support Vey. That could be... A very considerable <laughs> yeah and I think the the lack of knowledge about what's going on in the north of Italy from Rome at this Would point freak is, out, is yeah. freaking them out yeah. <laughs> see Livy gives me nothing but sort of fairly positive news Ooh. I mean it's not like it's not like the best news you could have which is that Rome defeats all and <laughs> masters all territory a plague <laughs> that is very specific yeah case swept close. through yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> um yeah once the Fabii have set up their fort and that kind of stuff, Livy seems to be feeling fairly positive that the Fabii are doing a good job um, with this sort of skirmishy, low-level type warfare. So it seems to start out fairly well. Um, although this might be where our accounts sort of match up. He does mention the fact that they do get sent reinforcements from Etruria, as in he's talking about like the Etruscans and the Trinians and that kind of stuff. The states to the north, in other words, which is never good. But, yeah, it's not like they're massively defeated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but the north is looming as a continuous threat. And Definitely, it seems that yeah. like, the nature of that threat is not necessarily known, and so everybody's quite worried. It's, look, it sounds like the main beef is to the north, and the people around them are just taking it. As, <laughs> as you would. Well, if I was a Volsky, I, I know what I'd be doing. Totally, exactly. Yeah. So I'd say that's probably just a war of opportunity. Well, not even a war. Conflict of opportunity. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, sorry, continue. Um, so, apparently, Amelius um, heads north. Um, yes. Which is not surprising with yeah, his yeah. consular army yeah. to hang out with his old buddy Kaizo, yeah. Fabius. Yeah, yeah. Um, so he's going to support this initiative against they. I too also have this mentioned, yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hey, buddy, old pal, haven't seen you for a while. Yeah, um, like, oh um, man. <laughs> <laughs> and Rome also decides to make the decision to send an army in all three directions, so not just north but also to the southeast and also to the northeast. Wow, so, that, this is significant undertakings. Yeah, yeah, so we're not seeing, I don't think we're seeing a reduced levering of the soldiers. Um, and the we were so hopeful. <laughs> yeah, we thought that the fortress might mean that they would levy less, but it seems that the Senate is worried about war on all fronts at this point. Which is understandable, yeah. And, yes, has decided to levy more. But this is where, I guess, this is what you were talking about. Like, from last episode, you mentioned how... Um, in spite of what's happening, it seems like the agrarian law has kind of fallen, you know, down the list of priorities because there's just no mention of unhappiness about, you know, being levied or being sent off to war again. Hmm. No mention of tribunes and no mention of agrarian law. It's just nothing. Yeah, it's almost like business as usual from a yeah. patrician perspective. It is all quite on all of the fronts. <laughs> <laughs> Even the Roman. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, Dionysius just says that the Senate has resolved to send three armies into the field yeah. and that levies are speedily raised. Okay, well. So yeah. it seems like the rumours such as they are, have generated enough fear that everyone's like, yep, sign me up. I sense bad things are coming. That's true. This is true. 
I suppose it's fairly obvious when it's coming at you from all sides. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's noticed. They're like, mm, yeah. yes, we should definitely do that. Um, so they get together equal armies to send out um, with a bunch of people. Yeah. So we know that Emilius is heading north, one of the consuls. Yeah. Gaius Servilius, uh, the other consul, is going to be heading to the southeast um, to yeah. tackle the Volskii. And they've brought in another guy, um, yeah. Servius Furious. <gasps> No, Sorry, I, I know. Like, I for a second. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I would hope it was our friend, but Servius Furious. I can't find any mention of him elsewhere. Oh, Otherwise, and unknown. his name just doesn't rhyme as well as Furious Furious. No, There's something about the way it rolls off the tongue. <laughs> maybe, maybe he's the brother of Spurious Furious, but he he has to be a relative. Of you have to give him that. Yeah, um, but he definitely yeah. is not the Furious that we know and love. Um, I'm smiling cheekily because I'm pleased nonetheless. <laughs> and he's given the task of going against the Aquians in the northeast. Well, I guess that makes sense because, I mean, traditionally speaking, obviously having two consuls, the idea is, as, as we've talked about before, you have one that can stay at home and look after things and one that can go to war. Obviously, if there's multiple wars happening, then you can send multiple consuls, but there's only two of them. So. Yeah, so if you've got a war on three fronts, as it turns out that you might do in yeah. 478 BC. If you're Rome, yeah. yeah. I'm just going to have to bring in somebody else to do the lion's yeah, share. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's interesting, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, Does so he have any special powers, or is he just... Look, seriously, like, he's given some, like, what Dionysius refers to as pro-consular power, which oh, okay. is not even a thing that exists at this point in Roman history, yeah, yeah. as far as anybody's concerned. But I presume the gist is, you're not a consul, but have some consular power. Well, yeah, you're <laughs> so, the head of this army. Yeah, yeah, We give exactly. you legal dispensation. Interesting. So how do they fare against these enemies? Oh, look, things go great for Servius Furious. Of course they do. <laughs> He's from the Furious clan. Yeah. <laughs> he heads out to the Aquian territory. Yeah. Um, routes them in a single battle. Yeah. Um, uh, terrifies the them. The Aquians do seem to be more of a pushover than other <laughs> people in this territory. <laughs> I don't think they've got the right allies at this no. point. Um, he lays waste to their country. The people take refuge and fall back. And he's like, huh. Oh. <laughs> that was easy. <laughs> Things go less well um, for Servilius. Against, wait, he's against the, the Volsci. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Things, and again, yeah. I feel like the Volsci have always traditionally put up more of a fight. Mm. Mm. You know? <laughs> and the thing is that he is a new consul. And ah, untested, yeah. Yeah, and we're and outside of this Fabian uh, knowledge base, you know, he doesn't, he hasn't, we don't know who he's learnt from. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he seems to go into battle, and it's described as headstrong. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Look. And he gets greatly a little too much of a keen yeah. bee. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Doesn't go well. Yeah. Um. Uh, becomes disappointed. Um, <laughs> Heaven forbid. He loses many brave men. Well, yeah, that is bad. <laughs> um, and he's forced to give up uh, pitch battles. So he no longer gets Ooh. to choose his own ground. Um, has to stay in his camp and then just starts doing skirmishes um, and a wow. bit of guerrilla warfare. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah, that is a bit more negative. Things, yeah. things get more mysterious for him later on. So he'll okay. come back later. Fair um, but for now, he's just kind of like, I'm sad. Guys, let's do a night raid. Yeah, see, Livy is very much keeping his eye firmly on the Fabii because, you know, they're all things. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds um, like it's a good time. Jump in. What are yeah, the Fabii well, doing? Yeah, at first it's okay. Like They're doing, they're doing well. Yeah, so they've got, they're doing well in their raids and that kind of stuff. Then they get reinforcements and they're like, ooh, that's a bit dodgy. <laughs> and when, once they get the reinforcements, it seems like they feel confident enough to lay siege to the fort that the Fabii have set up at um, Crimea. Okay. Oh, okay. So the Vey have some of their allies rock up. Yeah, like, I, I let's, think I let's feel do like, this yeah, now. They're feeling, they're feeling more confident, so yeah. they lay siege, which of course is what you would do if your enemy is set up a fort nearby. Uh, and this is it's at this point that Lucius Aemilius joins the cause against Fey. Um, and he has quite a close run battle with these northern forces. Um, however, it seems that he does manage um, through clever use of cavalry, etc. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah to, to manage to sort of hold their ground and the they ask for peace. But then, because they're the sneaky, stinking, horrible people from they, they then reverse that peace. Honestly. Can't, can't even make up their minds. Wow. Is anyone worse than they at this point in time? This yeah. Is yeah. Okay. Yeah. So basically... Dramatic. Basically, yeah. Basically, the, the, the people, the Vaetians, 
Phaeacians? Yeah. <laughs> Whoever they are. They they say, oh, okay, you're getting the better of us. Let's sue for peace. Wait a second, snap. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Yes. As, Lizzie, as Libby's translator slash Libby puts it, such was their natural inconstancy and such their bad faith. Ow. <laughs> Never trust the people from the north. Yep, yep, exactly. But luckily they do it quickly enough that I don't think the Romans are like massively caught unawares, you know. They're not sitting there sun baking and then go, wait, what? What? The Do what? Yeah. What? You don't want peace? <laughs> I thought we could invite you over for a dinner party I, at our fortress. I just stripped down to my tunic. This is most inconvenient. <laughs> So do you have any of that kind of stuff happening? I or? have, yeah, up to a certain point. Okay. So yeah. I've got, Emilius is like sent out against the northerners and yes. fine, so be it. Um, and they do get into a bit of a backwards and forwards where there is clearly a pitch battle and the flanks and stuff. And I could go into those details, but they're over pretty quickly. Yeah. And the important thing that comes up for this battle is that um, they stay near the camp that Vea set up. And then he attacks it continuously for 48 hours. Yeah. Interesting. It's just back and forth, back and forth. And he keeps... Because the camp is kind of like this enclosed spot outside Bay City. Right, yeah. um, They're kind of trapped. And he's allowed to... He's got the capacity with the fortress behind him to bring in fresh troops. So Uh. he he just does a bunch of shift changes. Um, I guess this is what happens when you let the Romans bring the fight to you. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) He's like, oh, I've got some troops over in my fortress. And everyone's like, oh, that fortress. (laughs) Um, Damn that fortress. Yeah, so he (laughs) takes over this camp. And, like, the camp is pretty substantial. Mm. Um, Not that they haven't taken Vey's camps before. Yeah, yeah. I know. But, yeah, here we are again. Well, yeah. I mean, mean, surely they also have the advantage. Not the advantage, but... They, they are also close to their hometown, and therefore you would presume they have yeah. their forces as well. And this is where the narrative becomes hilarious, <laughs> as far as, like... Excellent. <laughs> as far as Dionysius and Halicarnassus is concerned, I okay. love the details that drop in right now. Yeah. So they go in, mm-hmm. they take the camp. Right. It's taken them two days to do it, but they get in there. Yeah. And this camp is, like, the most amazing camp <laughs> ever. <laughs> okay, so I'm now picturing Romans, battle scarred. Coming in dirt, sweat, you know, like grime, with their, you know, their swords that they're ready. They burst through, and then I'm picturing like this really sweet, like childlike face of wonder just come over their face as their swords fall to their side, and they're like, "It's like Disneyland. It's just so pretty. It's more beautiful than I ever could have imagined." <laughs> yeah, it, this is pretty much what. It, yeah, this is a good description. Nice. Um, the Roman <laughs> army found itself in greater opulence than after any form of battle. Wow, they are saying something because yeah. the Romans they're taking some camps. <laughs> no, this is intense. Um, and then we get into like what is tantamount to a character assassination of the Tyrrhenians. <laughs> For the Tyrrhenians were a people of dainty and expensive tastes. Ah, yeah. Here we go. Bring it on. <laughs> Both at home and in the field. Oh, we are like luxury. <laughs> no, no, we're Romans. Yeah, <laughs> carrying about with them besides the necessities, costly and artistic articles of all kinds designed for pleasure and luxury. So what you're telling me, Dr. G, is while the Romans go proper camping, the Tyrrhenians go glamping. Yeah, (laughs) that's what they do. They're like, I found this eco-lodge and it's really, really nice. (laughs) I just just need to get a good night's sleep. I get my blanket. I just can't. I just can't have like you can't sleep on the earth. It's way too hard. <laughs> I like waking up with the breeze, but this mosquito net is really lovely because it saves me. Yeah. <laughs> and this fondue set is perfect <laughs> when you need a meal on the go, but you don't want to compromise on quality. <laughs> and I just can't believe the outdoor bar. You know, it's just amazing. So yeah, the Romans. The Romans obviously don't have don't want a bar of this. Look, the yeah. Romans just do a different type of camp. They do. Yeah. And they weren't expecting this to be so great. Look for the bare necessities, <laughs> a simple bare necessity. That's the Romans anthem. <laughs> On the other hand. Yeah. <laughs> but they, like, they not, like the luxuries. It secretly tickles their fancy. They so. do like the luxuries, so they take them all. Of course they the camp. <laughs> Of course they do. <laughs> so they're having Yeah, so in my note here is the Tyrrhenians. Taste makers. <laughs> See, I feel like the Romans are always okay with taking the luxuries if they feel like they've won them in a battle, and it's just like you know, they, it's like they're just desserts. It's it's what they've earned in hard mm. warfare. You know, they. It's the same with the Greeks. 
You know, they scorn the Greek ways, but they also love the Greek ways. Yeah, yeah. It's okay to have that really nice gold dinner set as long as you fought your own blood, sweat, and tears to get it exactly, off somebody else yeah. rather than just and they made it buying exactly it yeah that that would be crazy yeah that would be crazy because that would be indulging in luxuries but if you literally <laughs> had to decapitate someone to get it it's a different story <laughs> totally yeah and this is the moment where they sues for peace right okay, they're like but all of our pretty cool. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So they come out of the city, they send their older citizens. He's got my my collection of rare espresso cups. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what am I gonna drink my coffee in now? I really need my coffee in the morning, or I am not a happy glamper. Or like, a happy glamper. <laughs> I'm so sad. <laughs> and it's like so yeah, so they turn up. Yeah. Um, they come with some tokens. Uh, <laughs> more luxuries? Yeah, it oh, would seem so. Some little okay. gifts. Um, <laughs> and sue for peace. There's more where that came from. <laughs> Lamentations, entreaties, tears. <laughs> oh, the Romans would just be loving this. <laughs> and they seek a termination of the war. And they're like, we just can't handle this, guys. And they also, they're like, look, if you agree to this truce, yeah. um, we'll give you some grain for the next two months. Two well, months of five grain. I, um, I can only imagine that would be helpful for the Romans. Yeah, and we'll give you like yeah. six months worth of funds. Ooh. Yeah. I'm liking this. This yeah. is good. Yeah, and we'll give you time to like be able to take this truce back to Rome right. so we can negotiate a real peace deal and we come guess, to proper terms. It falls through very quickly when they are like, you've been way too generous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what does your account say? Mine, well, this is, this is the thing, mine barely has anything. It, oh, wow. It, it, it has what I told you before and then it sort of just goes back to after the reversal of the peace mm. because they sucks balls. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it goes back Libby goes back to saying so we fall back into this pattern of having a private war between the Fabians and the Vaetians Ve- sorry it just doesn't roll off the tongue very, <laughs> very easily fair enough yeah um, but he does interesting make, make this little side comment where he talks about the fact that they were both unsupported by any additional forces on either side so I feel like, okay, yeah, we get that the Fabians, it's a private thing. Mm. But with the with they, does that They mean... have nobody coming to help. Exactly. Is I mean, the whole rumour that started this year off was the fact that everybody from the north was coming yeah. down to support they. Precisely. So I kind of feel like what he's getting at there is that, yeah, it's it's just they versus Fabii. It's not anyone else from the north. There's no other people around Rome, you know, like allying with them. It is just, you know... The Fabians versus they <laughs> will win. <laughs> One family from Rome versus a whole well, see, city this of Atrocities. Is why, I think this is why Livy is just in seventh heaven talking about <laughs> Fabii right now because he goes on to talk about the fact that, okay, got more skirmishes, skirmish, skirmish, skirmish. Then, however, it gets a bit more serious. There are occasionally, like, you know, bigger, larger scale pitch battles. And the Fabian clan managed to win. Oh, what? Yeah, they managed to, sec- to secure some victories. And this really gets very <laughs> stroppy because... Not only have they lost all their luxuries, but they're now losing the war. Well, yeah, but also, it's not just that they're losing the war. They're losing it to a single Roman family. And Livy goes... Livy does not spare the fact that he really rubs it in. He's like, they, I mean, you know, they is like the most powerful state in Etruria. And here they are, losing to just a single clan from Rome. <laughs> that must hurt. <laughs> I feel sorry for they, and they were insulted. They could not put it, like, he goes on. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay, I feel like what, where Livy's at in his narrative is a little bit, further ahead than yeah. where Dionysius is willing to be up to right oh, now. Oh, I agree. Because, yeah, look, I'll give you a hint. I'm sorry, listeners. This is a bit of a spoiler. This whole thing is not going to end well for the Fabians. Huh? Let me just say that right now. <laughs> That's some mad foreshadowing right yeah, there. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> uh, I won't tell you how because we'll get to that. But Livy starts talking about the fact that not only do the people of Vey get really upset, but the Fabian clan starts getting... Overconfident. Ooh. Classic. Hubris. Exactly. Classic <laughs> mistake in any account, whether it's myth or history, in the classical world. 
And I feel like this is definitely Livy, you know, laying the groundwork for what is to come. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to build him up and Ooh. then I'm going to strip him right down. Yeah, I mean, he's, don't get me wrong, he's loving their actions, he's, all, he's, <laughs> he's a fan. But, uh, but yeah, I think he's definitely foreshadowing that, you yeah, know. Mm. Gonna, the worm will turn. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. The worm is will not. turn. Yeah. So what, uh, what additional details did Dionysius throw at you? We get some really cool sort of things that happen. Yeah. Um, like the land issue comes back into play. <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, for me, this is exciting. Yeah. So we have this moment where... Uh, the people from Vay sue for peace. Okay. They're like, let's have a truce yep. while we get a proper thing sorted out. You know, go back, talk to your Senate, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, and Amelius is like, yeah, yeah, I'll look after that. Mm-hmm. And the Senate is like, okay. Um, they receive the letter from Amelius where he's like, look, I think we should probably put an end to this war. Yeah. Um, and they're like, yep, yeah, we agree. And they say in their response, you, as the consul, you work out the finer details of the terms right, of the yeah. peace because you're on the front line. Totally, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, Lucius Aemilius does this. And okay. he goes for it. Um, he, can, <laughs> he concludes a piece with Ve, which is described by Dionysius of Halicarnassus as more equitable than advantageous to the conquerors. Interesting. And that, this is where I think the connections between Amelius and the Fabii uh, are important. Like, yeah. he wants to keep it soft for Ve because he wants to really bring something into the fold. You know, that like, interesting. like, look at our generosity. Yeah. Like, we could really smack you down right now, like, you're begging for peace. Um, but instead so of smacking like, you down, yeah. which we've done before, yeah, yeah, yeah. to other people who want peace. <laughs> Do you think it's so like the Fabians have that pull with Vey? I mean, surely this is only going to like appeal to Vey, like the Fabians setting up their own sort of little fiefdom in. I'm not sure. Because if it's, if it's equitable to Vey, then surely that means that the Roman state gets less. And... Yeah, but it means that the Fabii potentially get more. Because the Fabii are... Oh, I get what you're getting at. Sorry, right. yeah, okay. Because gotcha. the Fabii yeah. are there. I get you. And they're not leaving the fortress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you mean that, like, so they can keep getting the funds and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah if, exactly. they, if gotcha. they can set up their own negotiation situation yeah, yeah, yeah. with Vey, which is outside of the scope of the Roman peace, but the Roman peace is favourable, yes. the Fabii can be like, look, we're dealing with these people according to the terms of the peace treaty. Gotcha, you know, okay, We're yeah. treating them in an equitable so way. So almost like a third state. Yeah, they're like yeah. kind of like let's just do a bit of a win-win here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry, I get you. I yeah, get you. I yeah, think yeah. I, I feel yeah. like that might be one no, way. No, I, I was thinking. I was thinking in terms no. of like the Fabii having power in that region by yeah. being by being reasonable. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I get what you mean. Yeah. Like, because like, what's the advantage for Amelius? Like, he's just the consul. Um, well, exactly. He's not going to see any of the money personally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I feel like you know he's there's no way he'd be conducting these negotiations without talking to the Fabii, and actually he has strong connections with the Fabii. Well, the fact that I mean the fact that we've gone from this big like oh my god it's a private war ah, and then all of a sudden the consul's going off to help them, that's weird. That is weird. Yeah, and 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 you know it just happens to be a consul that has connections to the family. Yeah, it yeah. all it reeks of personal wheelings and dealings. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the people who are really winning here might be the Fabii. Nepotism. <laughs> all the yeah. way. Thanks, Rome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, so yeah, it's it's equitable. He doesn't take any of their territory as okay. part of this peace deal. Mm. Doesn't impose any fines. Right. Doesn't compel them to give hostages as security. Mm. Yeah, none it of the generous. usual things. Yeah. yeah, none of the things that mm. Rome always does when it tries to conclude a peace with people. It is like to really drag them through the dirt and being like, you've got to grovel. Especially there's a price like to be they. paid because yeah. we could just rub you into the dirt right now. They has has really been one of their more notable rivals like, yeah forever like even before even in the monarchy you know it's always been one of their and this is like the softest deal of all time exactly yeah what the <laughs> hell what the hell Emilianus? you'll be pleased to know that the senate is displeased uh, i am glad that they have some sense in their brains <laughs> this action brought upon him great odium Fair call, I think. Fair call. Yeah. Um, he requests a triumph, as is his wont, because... Wow, this guy's got balls. <laughs> well, he did win a two-day battle against a camp and well, sacked it and all of that sort yeah, of stuff. 
And the Senate says, uh, you don't get a triumph because you just, like, <laughs> like that peace deal. Lame is peace deal ever. Yeah, that, was, <laughs> that was lame. And that is not what we expected you to do. Is Emilianus upset? Yeah, he mm. is upset. Yeah. Um, so the Senate offer him the chance for redemption. Mm, yeah. Okay. They're like, how about you go and fix up the mess down south um, that Civilius has got himself into. Oh, okay. With the yeah. Volsci. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. he's doing some skirmishes. He's not having a great time. Yeah, yeah. Um, and if you can pull through on that, yeah. maybe you can have your triumph. Okay. So they're like, they're like, we need to split Emilius up from the baby like, eye. I feel we like get him is, out of there. I feel like he is going to win. Mm. I don't know that because I literally doesn't mention much of this. <laughs> well, so yeah, so things get complicated. Okay. Um, immediately, Emilius is offended. Uh, right, okay. <laughs> first of all. That he has um, to go and do more work? Or... Well, that he, that he, that this is such a slight upon his honour. He's like, I don't see how the peace deal that oh, I concluded. I like, I've yeah. done exactly what the Senate asked of me. Yeah. I concluded the peace deal that they gave me you jurisdiction. I got a peace deal. Yeah. yeah exactly. I also won that battle, which got us to that peace deal. Fair enough. I can see his point too. I can't see it. Yeah. And so he's really angry that the Senate is trying to play him. Yeah. Um... Get more out of him. Than, yeah, 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 yeah. And and he's like, I don't think this is right. He gets really angry and he riles up the popular assembly. Oh, okay. And he was Let like... Let me guess. He does it using the Aquarian law? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He says, he says that the Senate is doing all of this stuff with treacherous intent through their contempt for the poor. As in doing the peace treaty or is it not giving him a triumph? Not giving him a triumph. Um, concluding wanting to do the deal with Vey, but wanting him to pay more for it. Okay. And he says that the slight against him is a slight against the people as well, mm. because actually they want to be freed from foreign wars. Because if the poor are freed from foreign wars, then they don't get levied. And I then think they, that's and then we go get down to, well. Yeah, <laughs> we get to deal with the land issue. Yeah, yeah. Um, but instead, it seems like they're putting the peace deal into jeopardy by saying that it was a bad deal on the other hand if he <laughs> secured land then maybe he'd have something to give to them <laughs> mm. just saying yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we get this moment where um Emilius like flips out uh, <laughs> riles up the popular assembly yeah and it's not at all clear whether he's still doing anything that could be construed as pro Fabian at that point yeah okay Hmm, good point. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I don't know how to feel about this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it gets crazier. Okay. It gets even crazier. Hit me with it. Because yeah. neither Livy nor Dionysius of Halicarnassus mention the Suffolk Consul for this year. Right. And we think, as far as the Fasti um, Capitolini is concerned, yeah. is that uh, Servilius dies. Yes, I did see that. When he's in the south. Wait a second. Wait. Wait. No. <laughs> in battle or in... At some point, nobody's really... Like, there's just no details. There's no narrative history for this. We've just got an extra consular name on the fasty list. Okay. So what are you thinking? So... Disease? Oh, <laughs> battle? This is a... Murder? <laughs> it's just all so speculative. Yeah. <laughs> What's great is this guy has a really intense name. Um, That's true. Yeah, yeah. Opita Virginius Tricostus Esquilines. Freaking hell. And it's like, it's so detailed. And you think to yourself, that guy's got to be real. I'm like, what a weird It name. also doesn't so many... sound super foreign. It's low, no. but it still sounds native to the area. It does. Yeah. That's more I mean, than... For God's <laughs> sakes, he's got one of the hills of Rome's name. <laughs> his name. Shoved it in his yeah. name there. Right he used to live on the Escaline. So what do you call it? Yeah, Escaline. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the Jewish. The Romans. Being literal. <laughs> Since 500 BC. <laughs> yeah, so it's not at all clear whether Amelius has been asked to go south because actually the consul's been... Died. Yeah, 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 died. Yeah, died yeah, in yeah. battle. But the, the Suffolk that's going to replace him needs some support or whether there is actually like this, like something to this land agrarian, the mm. poor are being violated 
Um, because the arguments don't really hold up. The narrative is a bit all over the shop. It is a bit all over the shop. And, and the other thing is, we're not really hearing it from the plebs side, as in, we're not getting mentions of the plebs were displeased. <laughs> <laughs> the plebs rioted until they got scared that they were going to be murdered and they left. Yeah. Um, the usual signs. <laughs> yeah, but things get pretty intense. Okay. Um, because we have this moment where he decides that um, he doesn't want to govern. Right. And he doesn't want to kowtow to the Senate. Okay. So what he does is he dismisses all of the troops under his standards. Mm-hmm. And he also dismisses all of the troops that are hanging around after the Aquii stuff. Because they're led by Furious. And Furious is not a consul. No, no. He's got the power to lead the army. Yeah. But Aemilius yeah. is above him. So he goes through and dismisses all of the troops under Furious out of the standards. And he just goes around Rome and sends all the troops home. And this, this is, is his move. This, this is his move. Very strange. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. And that's kind of like where this um, year ends with Amelia setting up like this agrarian conflict is back on the table, but it's not sure how or why. Or how it's working out. Or yeah. how it's really even going to work. I feel like work. this is why Olivia sidestepped this issue. It's messy. <laughs> it's very messy. And it's yeah. not at all clear what's going on. And once you throw in the details from the fasti, yeah. which nobody can really explain. Well, no, exactly. I mean, um, like two of these consuls, if, you know, if that's what they are, no idea where they've come from. And they have really, as you say, really detailed, unusual names. Yeah. Yeah. Like, which what? makes it seem... Who what now? Very <laughs> real. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, okay, well, so we shall pause there. But you'll definitely want to tune in next time, listeners, because there is more Fabian fun to be had. But now, Dr. G, are you ready for... <coughs> the partial pick! I certainly am ready. Oh, okay. Woo. So, all right, out of 10 eagles in each category for a total of potentially 50 out of 50 golden eagles. Well, it's tempting. I want those Ooh. golden eagles. I ah. want them bad. Ah. <laughs> I want them as much as a Tyranian likes treasure. <laughs> <laughs> I want them as much as the people of Vey like glamping. <laughs> okay, so military clout. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, Rome, I feel like you're not at your best. <laughs> it's a bit of a balancing act. I mean, so we've got three armies. They're all heading out in different directions. Yeah. Um, one does super badly. Yeah. Um, skirmishes. One does pretty well. Yeah, one does pretty well, yeah. pretty easy, and one struggles but overcomes. So I feel like that's got to be over 50%. Yeah, I feel like it's not too high. And also, even though I've got mention of, you know, if they were doing okay, they were doing all right, they, they managed to defeat, you know, blah, 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 Rome versus the they. They're coming out on top most of the time, etc. It's still not an, a flat out, we won everything, all of the time. War over. <laughs> Romans, no war. <laughs> Which, if it was, if that was the case, Livy would be saying that. So, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. No uh, doubt. Do we think, like, a seven? Or is that too generous? Yeah, What's look, I, I feel like a seven is, is justified based on the two-thirds. So yeah. I'm like, sure, they're, they're having a bit of a struggle. But they did get vague to the point where they were like, please, please, please make peace exactly. with us. Exactly. They may have turned around instantly and said they took it back. <laughs> But nonetheless, <laughs> that was Rome's fault for lies or lies. Not noticing they all had their fingers crossed behind their backs. Yeah. And quite frankly, they deserved it. <laughs> okay, so we've got seven. We've got seven golden eagles. What's the next category? Diplomacy. Okay, diplomacy. If you're from Ve, I think diplomacy is going well exactly. on some level. Because you get but a very preferable from peace the deal. Roman point of view. Very not well, really. I mean, they want, they like peace deals, but, but only when they get something out of it. They are being diplomatic, though. That's the thing, isn't it? They did try. They did try. Well, they didn't... Yes. Hmm. I feel like it's got to be a five. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. On the balance, you know. Yeah. All right. So we got twelve. Okay. All right. Expansion. No expansion. Yeah. Fat not zero happening. there. Yeah. Not happening at all. <laughs> Weirdus. Hmm. Amelius see. gets angry, but I don't know if he's justified. Yeah. I I still don't understand what exactly is happening with him. Hmm. I feel like there's definitely still some worse what's happening because the Fabians are still you know soldiering on, huh? <laughs> Literally. Uh, yeah, yeah. Still, they're still funding it. They're still keeping true to their word. You know, and there's no talk of like, say, mutiny or or anything like that. Yeah, the Fabii seem pretty tight. If they're handling their own personal war, they're doing all right. Exactly. I still feel like it's going to be like a, a four, maybe, or a five. What do you reckon? Look, I'm I'm willing to go with a four because I mean, okay. you've got. Yeah. Uh, well, maybe.
might push it up into five because you do have success against the Aquians. There's some weird twists. Exactly. You know, yeah. for the leader it's there. only really one campaign that's going really badly. And they're not yeah. losing. As in, sorry, they haven't lost. They are losing. Yeah. <laughs> There's a difference. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. So we've got, we got uh, 17. Ooh, and finally, last but not least. The citizen yeah, score. Uh, unfortunately, I feel like this has got to go downhill again. We were doing quite well last time, but I feel like, although we have very little mention of the citizens in this episode, they all got levied. Yeah, for sure. And they and all agreed, but then they all got riled up again, potentially, about the land issue. Yeah, I just feel like they're getting levied, they're having to serve in multiple wars and multiple fronts. Like, that must be stressful. I would be stressed if I was in their, in their situation. So, yeah, I, I kind of feel like it's a massive backfire to, like, maybe three? Ooh. Three purely because we have like, <laughs> much specific mention of, like, yes, they're rolled up, but it's coming from above, not below, you know? Yeah, yeah. There's no rising. We don't get any understanding that the yeah, I mean, let's face it, if you ever here. want to get a plebeian rolled up, all you have to do is say, plebeian. <laughs> 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 and they'll be like, ah, ah, I'm unhappy. <laughs> Fair enough. So, what do you reckon? Three, look, I think yeah. Look, I think three is maybe even generous. I feel okay, like maybe, maybe like yeah, maybe even a two. Fair call. And it's like, I can settle for a two. It's like they've all been levied, and there doesn't even seem to be any room in the narrative for them to be against that. Yeah. And I feel like it's it's not like it's not still on the table. It's just that the narrative is just glossing over it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And I think it's to set up. I think Dionysius has glossed over it because he wants to set up Emilius for this moment of riling them back up again. Yeah. You know, yeah. I think it's a narrative device rather than and I feel like Livy is just not like it's been such a constant feature and I feel like Livy has just got his eyes on the Fabians ah. he really does <laughs> he's got a twinkle in his eye I only have eyes for you <laughs> <laughs> got such a crush right now yeah and, and obviously like this is the kind and, and I can completely understand why because it's not just the same old story he's finally got something where he can turn it into this grand narrative of, you know, heroic acts, one family versus a rival state, kicking ass, taking names, you know. Um, and that's exactly what, again, like what Mary Beard talked about when we talked about it last time. You've got essentially what is local warlords with a gang, but the rhetoric of the historians is turning it into something much more... Yeah, they're trying to sound, make it sound much more like Rome is a cohesive unit than perhaps it is right now. Totally, yeah. So, there are yeah. huge factions. Yeah, so I can completely see how Livy is probably just ignoring the, the citizens. Anyway, <laughs> so I, I agree with you. That gives us with a total of 19... Ooh, Go 19. Eagles. Not Go good. Eagles. We're back under the 20 mark. Oh, Rome. Go yeah. left a game. Yeah. Maybe next episode. I, I feel like next episode is going to be a big one. <laughs> it's going to be a big deal. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Tune in for next time. Happy 80th, Dr. G. Oh, thank you. You're looking so good for 80. I know. How do we do it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs>